to get started again. Laurent mentioned very briefly super apps, and if that made you think, I'd like to hear a lot more about it. You're lucky because <laughs> Hugo and Nicola from Faber Novell are here to talk about super apps and uh, leveraging APIs. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's the perfect transition for us. <laughs> So hi everyone, we are very happy with Hugo to be here on stage um, talking about super apps. Um, so today we are going to see how these super apps are uh, leveraging APIs in order to uh, position themselves as tomorrow's ecosystems. So I wanted to start by asking you who is familiar with super apps, but now I guess everyone is. So that's perfect. Uh, today, just to let you know, we are mainly focusing on one super app, which is maybe the most well-known one, which is WeChat. Um, and to start, I will ask you a small question on the penetration rate of WeChat in China. So, in your opinion, what is the penetration rate of WeChat in China? 83, yeah, I heard it in the room, so that's pretty huge. Um, WeChat is a product from Tencent. Uh, it was created in January 2011, and uh, in only eight years, uh, this company has grown bigger and bigger, and it's now massive. Um, as you can see, it's 1.1 1. Uh, uh, 1 .1 billion users, active users. It uh, accounts for uh, uh, one third of the total mobile traffic network in China, which is huge and it's a penetration rate uh, of 83%. And if we compare to Facebook in the US, so in the uh, national market of uh, Facebook, it's only 68%. And if we look at the biggest cities in China, it's uh, this penetration, years, uh, penetration rate uh, goes to 92%. So what does that mean? It means that everyone is uh, on WeChat in China. And so what's inside the box? Um, we call it a super app. Uh, in a way, WeChat, uh, the value proposition of WeChat is the value proposition of your smartphone. So it's a, a, a kind of digital Swiss army knife for the everyday life. So you will find all the, uh, you in, in a way you will find an app store inside the, uh, the app of WeChat. Um, and you have these bricks. So uh, you have a chat bricks. WeChat is, has been created as a sort of uh, WhatsApp. You also have like social features. It's a mix of social features you, you can find of Instagram, Snapchat, or Facebook. It's also a digital wallet uh, where you have payment solution. You can pay with QR code. You can transfer money. You can have access to banking and insurance features. And WeChat is also a place where uh, Third parties will connect to the final users and mainly through mini programs. Uh, so what are mini programs? Mini programs are light apps based on web technologies that you will stream when you want instead of downloading, uh, downloading it on your phone. So in the same way you are now streaming movies on Netflix instead of downloading it. It's the exact same thing on WeChat. You are just streaming the apps when you need and you, need, you don't need the space to download it on your phone. And so Many, many persons are uh, de developing many programs. You have like third parties uh, services and also public services. So you can do like millions of different tasks on, uh, on, on WeChat. You can renew your visa, you can book a plane ticket, you can even ask for divorce on WeChat. So it's pretty, uh, pretty a huge use. And WeChat is what we call like a super app. And um, the app has really created this concept um, to be to put it simply, uh, a super app is three things. So a unique access point, you only have one app. A seamlessly integrated ec ecosystem, so it's very easy to navigate through all these services uh, inside the app. And its own payment solution, so WeChat Pay. So the promise is pretty clear. You, have, you are like at one tap away from everything. And so WeChat created this model year after year. And now companies like Alipay and Grab, like Gojek, like Matron Jumping, they try to replicate this model uh, because it's very su successful. Um, and which is in, uh, what is interesting to see is like these companies come from completely different background. Like if you look at WeChat, it was created as a chat app. Alipay was a payment service. Grab and Gojek uh, were born as Ubers of Singapore and in Indonesia. So they come from very different background and in the end, they look like the same, like a big platform ecosystem with lots of uh, different uh, um, services inside and their own payment solution. 
And so you, maybe you will ask, what is so successful? Why uh, super hubs are so uh, successful in, the, in Southeast Asia and China? And it's mainly because they are providing an, an, uh, a top user experience. And here is a small example of the experience you can have uh, when you want to book a mobile, uh, a free floating bike in the, in the street. For our phone, for us in Europe, we'll go on the App Store, download the app, maybe delete app to make some, some space on our phones, then open the app, create an account, put our credit card on it and all that stuff. 10 minutes later, then we are on the go. On WeChat, it's completely different. You open WeChat, you launch the mini programs, like one, one second, and then you scan the QR code and you're on the go. You're already logged in, you already have your bank account on it, so it's much more fluid. And that's the big difference with super apps, it's that they provide, uh, they enable like top user experience on any kind of services and with a very designer approach. So they want to reduce the time you need to complete an action. So that's why it's a uh, Swiss army knife in your everyday life. You will just use WeChat so many times just to make your life easier and uh, do tasks uh, quicker. And so super apps, it's not only uh, Chinese centric uh, things, it's originated in China, it's now very, very uh, widespread in Southeast Asia, but it's also present in Africa with firms like Ope, it's also in Latin America with Rapi, and we have like very numerous signs of uh, th this model being like also replicated by uh, giants that we know, like Uber, like Facebook, like these companies, they try to replicate the model. So in the end, this model of super apps, we just like maybe arrive in Europe uh, in, a, in a new way. Uh, but now it's like billions of people that are interacting in an everyday uh, basis with super apps, and that's pretty huge. And so you have understood that, that super apps rely deeply on partners to bring value for the, power for the final users, thanks to these like millions of mini programs. Um, in WeChat, for instance, you have like three ways for a brand to connect with final users. You have like official accounts, which are like subscription accounts and service accounts, and you also have these mini programs. So the first two ones are not game changing in terms of technology and experience. Um, these official accounts are uh, in the form of chat, uh, chat uh, folder. So you chat with the brand like in a chatbot on, uh, on Facebook to put it simply. Servi uh, subscription accounts are mainly dedicated for brands that uh, are interacting a lot with their consumer and sharing content, sharing like articles and um, service, service accounts are much more uh, deeper integrated in terms of services. You can have like e-commerce, customer ser service and games. But these ones are pretty uh, classic. They are just like uh, in their uh, chat, uh, chat uh, interactive, uh, uh, um, uh, quite different uh, if we look at Facebook. But the one that interests us a lot today is mini programs. So. As you can see, mini programs can be considered maybe at first glance as one channel among others. So if you're a brand, you can like go on a marketplace, you can have your standalone uh, website, you can have your uh, website or a mobile app or go on WeChat. If you go on WeChat, you can have your official accounts like, uh, as I just explained, but you can also create mini programs. And mini programs are really where the value is for a brand because they can deliver top-notch service. And Super Apps loves mini programs. Like WeChat created this concept in 2017 uh, based on uh, uh, existing technologies, these web te technologies. And now all the Super Apps are trying to replicate this WeChat ID. And now, as you can see, like all these companies are uh, developing mini programs and they have convinced like hundreds of millions of users to use mini programs. And I will let you go explaining you what mini programs are and why is it so effective. So um, I hope Nicola made clear that mini programs is the secret sauce of uh, super apps. And I want to take some time with you to understand uh, what is uh, behind mini programs and how they work. So first thing is everything is in the experience with mini program. And we talked about um, mini program is kind of web technologies, but kind of different. So we'll take some time to just take a look at those two uh, screen recording. On the left, you have like what we call a fast mini program. So you see that you click, in a two seconds, uh, you got your pro mini program loaded, and it really looks like a real app. 
uh, on the right, uh, you got the classic slow web view that we know quite well in Europe. And the slow web view is like it takes forever to load. And when you're inside the web view, you really feel like inside a browser. So you completely broke the experience. So now you can ask, like, what's the magic for this fast mini program? What's the difference? So we took uh, some time to look um, what was really inside uh, the WeChat um, mobile application. So we decompiled it. And in the end, uh, it's that there is no kind of magic. Like many programs, there are web views and steroids. So what do we mean by steroids? Um, WeChat offers optimized, simplified connection between the mini program and the OS. So through custom APIs, WeChat is giving this super web view the ability to do three things. The first thing is uh, enjoying like UI guidelines. Um, so it's really nice when you're a mini program developer because you can use like a model, a toast, an action sheet, so just like a uh, native app developer would have. So it's cool for uh, the mini program developers. And in the end, you have like um, coherent experience uh, uh, around all the different mini programs. On top of that, um, uh, the other APIs are access to the phone feature. So usually when you're inside a web view, uh, you don't have access to uh, any phone features. Um, it's getting better and better with HTML5, but it's really uh, limited. Because uh, WeChat is a native app, it's connected to all the sensors of your phone. So we got like access to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, accelerometer, everything. And it's kind of creating a bridge between the native API of your phone and the JavaScript uh, of the web view. So in the end, when you develop a mini program, you have access to all the sensors of the phone, and you can develop a tailor-made experience for your end users. Finally, um, and I think that's where like the biggest value resides, is like you like WeChat because uh, you pay in one click, you, can, you don't need to log in every time, and um, because uh, WeChat um, owns all those information, it can give them to the mini program. So if you're a mini program, you just have like one JavaScript function, which is called request payment to call, and it will uh, charge your user on the WeChat wallet. So if you remember like your complex and boring like payment tunnel, uh, forget it in mini programs because it's a one-click WeChat uh, request payment function. That's what makes all the difference. So uh, here we are, you have your business, uh, which is uh, not integrated in SuperApp, I suppose, today. And you have to make a decision, should I go or should I not go? But maybe if you take a step back and you try to remember uh, what did your business in the previous years, you can remember that 20 years ago, you had a physical shop and it was working really well. And people came and say, hey, you know, you should give it a try to website. It's really cool and you can reach a lot of people. But you were afraid of cannibalizing your physical store with the website. I'm pretty sure most of you created a website and you're quite happy with that. And then 10 years later, so 10 years ago, people came and say, whoa, your website is really cool, but you know, uh, now everyone is making a mobile app. And you say, yeah, but you know I have my website. Maybe if I open a mobile app, it will cannibalize my website and I lose my user. But I think most of you, again, developed a mobile app. And you should be quite happy with that. And today, ta-da, super app are coming. So you have, a uh, you have a choice to make is, should I develop a mini program and at the risk of my mobile app being cannibalized by WeChat or another super app? I will try to give you some key um, to help you in making this decision. So, what, what would you want to join a super app? At first, is because you want to profit from the super app user pool. This user pool is huge. Uh, in China, we are speaking about like hundreds of millions of persons. And that really makes the difference between like previous companies and like super apps. It's they do not hesitate to share their user bases with all their partners or mini programs. And um, What's really interesting is like you enjoy the WeChat user basis, but as more and more companies are coming with their mini programs, they're bringing their own user into this pool. So we are really like an ecosystem where each uh, player is bringing added value for the other player. So it's a choice for you to make, because if you join the super app, uh, you will enjoy this awesome pool, but maybe you'll bring your own uh, user base inside this pool, and maybe you lose a few customers. But I think in the end, like targeting this pool will make like your user bases grow rather than decrease. Another fact is like um, 
today, if you have a mobile app, as I said, um, maybe uh, like the pain point are when the people open the app, you need to sign up or you need to log in. People forget the password, and it's like you really um, you really want to get rid of that. And you can do that in a mini program. You enjoy like the WeChat identity. You don't need to ask the user to log in. You get like a uh, unique WeChat ID. You can work with that. Everything is fine. So you can uh, aim for a better user experience in terms of logging and identity. In addition to that, um, you can enjoy the pain in one click. And it's quite big for all your businesses. Um, Nicola gave the example of Mobike. Um, Mobike for some of you, maybe some of you took one of the, this bike uh, to come to uh, the show or like the conference because of the strike. And maybe you have enjoyed uh, like inputting your credit card number, maybe you're receiving an SMS to check everything is OK. And maybe you're not really trusting mobile, but uh, you did it because you really needed this bike. And here with WeChat, the trust is established between WeChat and the user. And WeChat is like kind of uh, saying the user, you have nothing to, to fear, so it's much easier for the user to come using WeChat, open a mini program, and in a few seconds, pay like for your product inside your mini program. So it's really a big deal, this pay in one click. And finally, I think this one is uh, not that uh, obvious, is uh, the performance of the super app infrastructure is really good. Because WeChat penetration rate is so high, they have to make like huge investment is like, networks and replications and you know, CDN and stuff like that. And because your mini program is kind of handled by this WeChat or this super app infrastructure, you're enjoying this huge infrastructure which is uh, deployed all around the globe. So it really is like a good news for you. But you could say like, hey, OK, I'm in Europe. There are no real super app today. And I think my company can become a super app. And why not? Um, but you should be careful because becoming a super app is, of course, not that easy. Uh, to help you, we try to give you like the three main points you, know, you should have for your company to become if you want to become a super app. The first one is you need to have a service with a key value which is strong enough to support a galaxy. Um, so as you can see, as for today, like payment is the key for every super app. You got Alipay, you got WeChat. Uh, you got Google Spot in India, they're all based around payment. One competitor, Uber, is trying to build some kind of different uh, super app around another key value, which is moving things. We'll see if it works or not, but I'm pretty sure that in the coming years, you will see a merge uh, a super app with a different, uh, different key value than payment. Then you need solid partnership with your ecosystem uh, backbone partners. What does it mean? It means like uh, six months ago, Google launched in India with Google Spot, and they opened their mini program uh, ecosystem. But to launch that, they already had like 12 really big players already installed in India because you need to attract your first user. And for that, you need really strong partnerships with your backbone partners. So keep in mind, it's like a team play, and you can go like alone doing a super app. And in the end, of course, like what the other companies will come uh, uh, for your super app is a really large user pool. So you should already have like a big app uh, in Europe or in France, which is, uh, uh, which is um, managing a lot of users. OK? So here we are. Uh, maybe you did not know that much about uh, WeChat uh, or super apps at the beginning. Uh, we tried to explain to you what was a super app, then what was the secret sauce of if there was some magic behind, uh, behind the super app. And there's no big magic. You can even like, think becoming one of them. Uh, what we say is like, brace yourself, because super apps are coming. For the moment in Europe, we are kind of the last one uh, with America uh, to not live in a super app era. But you should prepare for your decision. Should you join a super app and carefully choose your ecosystem? or? Do you want to become one, but it will be at great cost for your company? Thanks, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. There is, like, uh, it is extracted for, uh, from a much bigger one. So if you want more details about SuperApp, uh, I recommend you, like, scanning this, and you will see, like, tens and tens of slides with a lot of details um, about WeChat. Thanks. Thank you. Questions for these guys? All right, I'll go up top, then I'll come back to you. Merci à toi. 
So you, you mentioned uh, the value of creating a mini app. Can anybody just create one and put it on WeChat or are they doing any kind of validation of the participants in their ecosystem to be sure you're not just uh, ripping off everybody that you know comes and takes payments from, from people without giving them a service? Uh, yeah, in the same way when you want to create an app on iOS or Android, you have like steps and validation. You do the same on WeChat, so you have rules to follow uh, in the UI, in the UX, in what you put inside the mini, mini, mini programs, and you have like validation steps, so you cannot do whatever you want in terms of uh, design or in terms of functionalities, and they are also very careful to uh, uh, check what mini programs are uh, vicious and uh, in order to preserve the user ex ex experience. What they have done as well, like um, like the founder of we WeChat, Alan Chang, is like obsessed by customer experience. And what he has uh, launched like a few months ago is um, like if you are not using, like you can pin mini program on WeChat, like in the same way you pin apps on your uh, on your smartphone. And if you're not using mini programs during like three months, it will disappear by by itself. Just like they really want you to use the mini programs that are useful for you, so they take this design decision to remove these ones from your pinned mini program if you're not using it. So yeah, uh, they are very careful of what uh, mini programs are on WeChat, and they regularly like just uh, do some cleanup uh, if mini programs are not like good enough for the WeChat ecosystem. And that's why there are like so much value in this ecosystem because it's very competitive between mini programs. And if you want your mini programs to be shared, like the uh, first way to discover a mini program is by peer-to-peer -peer sharing. So it's a complete different model than Facebook, where the one who has the biggest amount of money can just pay to have this content everywhere. On WeChat, it's most, mostly through sharing. So if your mini program is bad, no one will share and you won't have traction. So they made these design rules for the ecosystem. So it's very uh, competitive between mini programs to provide like top-notch and um, different experience for the users. So if your mini programs are good, it will be shared and then it will reach millions of you. If not, it will just disappear in the WeChat galaxy of uh, death mini program. <laughs> Um, at the end of the presentation, you suggest um, three points for uh, for an app to become a, a super app. But uh, in my point of view, uh, is this more relevant to? Uh, it's a, a, a question as well that I'm asking myself. But is it more relevant to wait for I don't know Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, any anything to become uh, one and then to join? or uh, to try to be the one. I, I think it's more dangerous to try to be the one, but what's your uh, opinion? Yeah, clearly you're right. Um, what we try to explain is like the natural move is joining a super app, and uh, you should carefully choose which one you want to, to join first. Maybe you can join uh, several of them, but you uh, should target like mainly one of them. And this slide was about like, hey, you know, I'm a big company and I got a big mobile app. We met some of them and we even uh, helped them uh, think about becoming a super app and what the roadmap could be for them. Um, and it was just to let you know that I think some actors are pr big enough in Europe uh, to create like a super app. Uh, we are not working with them, but for instance, Le Bon Coin in France, it has a really big user pool. It can like make payment really easily. Um, it, could, uh, it can have like strong partnership in France and maybe in Europe. So it could be, for instance, be become a super app. So for us, like this slide was saying, like it's not a fatality. We won't be like WeChat slave for the next 10 years. And we can dream of creating our own super app, but of course it's not for everyone. And I will add as well, um, WeChat is maybe the most complete super app. It's very widespread ev ev everywhere. But if we look at Uber, which is a very good example, because they have recently said that they want to become the everyday app, which is like a super app. They have, uh, they are developing like payment solution. They are doing like financial products for their uh, drivers, and maybe tomorrow it will be for their users. Uh, they are integrating uh, Uber Eats uh, and all mobility and their services inside one app. So they will like mix all these different apps inside one. So these are signs that they want to become a kind of 
transportation super apps. So maybe, um, like WeChat is very widespread, but maybe we'll see like these uh, vertical super apps, like transportation super apps, and maybe like retail super, super apps, maybe a more specific, they don't want to do like everything, but they will just have their core value very uh, strongly uh, defense, uh, de defended, and then they will add uh, specific services, but they won't do like everything, but they will do like a big part and very, very good, uh, in a very good way. So that's also one move that we can see uh, on this field. So it could be a choice for you to become like one vertical super app and uh, Uber is trying to do so uh, in, in the currently. Other questions? I have one. You, s you said probably choose one super app to start with, but maybe you end up going to a few. So let's look into the future, and there's a whole bunch of them. With, the, with mobile apps, you have two platforms, and already that's difficult, right? How, <laughs> how do you see the future going where you are on multiple it's a really apps. good one. So it's the exact same problem with your mobile app. So should I go to iOS? Should I go to Android? Some, uh, some companies can afford like targeting only one, but usually if you're big enough, you want to target both. So uh, at first you say, ah, I need to pay twice and I need to develop two native apps. And some people say, hey, we know, we'll do some cross-platform frameworks like React Native. Um, and guess what? It's happening in China. Like people say, okay, I develop a mini program on WeChat, and then I need to do it on Alipay, and then I do it on this other super app. And some guy came and said, hey, guess what? I will do a cross platform mini program for super app uh, framework. So the same exact thing is happening. I'm pretty sure, like, um, the best mini pro just like for mobile. So if you want, like, a really good user experience for your end user and your big enough company, you're not a startup you will um, invest in like in iOS and Android apps. And I think it's the exact same position for super apps in the future. If you're a small startup or company and you don't have that much money, you can use like a super app cross-platform framework. It's called Taro in China today. And, um, but if you're a big enough company and you want to give like a, the best of the user experience, you will develop like one for WeChat, one for Alipay, one for Uber, and one for Le Bon Coin. I don't know. All right, that makes sense. Any final questions? All right, everyone's ready for the break, which is for 45 minutes, and then we will be back here with Data Driven Society, and you can check the program for all the other options. Thanks. Merci.